Hi, so I thought it would be a good idea to record a bit at the start of this video to explain um, what the video is about uh, and the end result. So what I'm going to be doing is going through the process of making a little sci-fi panel, something like this. Um, the whole point of this workflow is to be as fast as possible um, and also to set stuff up to be able to produce more assets really, really quickly after it. So this is going to be quite a long video, but um, after you've done this, you'll be set up to make environments really quick. Uh, so the main thing I'm going through is how to set up material functions within Unreal 4. Um, so you can see we've obviously got this asset. If I get right up close to this, um, you can see that the texture on there is really quite nice and high res. Uh, so what we've got is we've got tiling materials on here that are being blended through masks. So the rust is, uh, we've got a tiling paint material and a tiling rust material and then we're, we're telling it where to put each one. So again, it means that we can get up really nice and close and um, it looks good. So we've just got 2048 by 2048 textures on here, although the mask at the moment is 4096. Uh, so yeah, if you want to know how to set up material functions, um, hopefully this will be helpful. I can get this up. Um, so you can see this is how, this is what we'll end up with, with an instance where we can do things like change the colour of this stripe. Um, we can alter the normal strength of the, the paint that's on here and we can alter maybe, I don't know, like the colour of the rust that's on there um, and so on and so forth and that is all powered through a base material like this which combines the painted metal with the rust uh, and these things are functions. Um, so I've got something that I've made that I've just, some kind of sci-fi wall panel type thing. Um, I'm not going to go through modelling or unwrapping as such, um, but I do want to show how I would go from having something simple like this and putting it into uh, a game engine. So this is kind of where I'd recommend modelling nowadays um, I'm going to put into the normal map a few kind of rivets and uh, screws and that sort of thing I would suggest everything kind of above that level that you model in so I mean at the moment this is 207 poly so 220 verts which is a completely negligible number of verts um, especially for something this size so I mean really I think anything this below a thousand verts nowadays is pretty much negligible. Um, so I could put more detail into this, but this is what I'm going to use for now. Uh, my unwrap, there's nothing special about that at all either. Um, the method that I'm using, one thing that I do want to do is to try and keep my uh, UVs kind of scaled quite evenly. Um, so if I were to put a checker on then all of these squares are kind of roughly the same size. Apart from that um, there's nothing at all special about the UVs. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to, I don't want to put this, I'm not going to bake a normal map for this because um, it's too big. Um, so this is going to be, if I put a box in here, say a person is going to be so about 1.8, a person is going to be about that high so it's quite big piece of geometry. Um, so obviously I could bake a normal map onto it, but the 
even at 4K, the normal map's not going to look great. The, probably the main reason I'm not picking the normal map, though, is because it's just quite time-consuming um, to do. And I want to do this as fast as I possibly can. So what you want to do is, with an asset like this, basically just bevel the edges. Um, so if I had a box, um, essentially the trick is to put it all into one smoothing group. So if I put all this into one smoothing group, it looks pretty awful. Um, but if I start adding some edges, just like you would if you were going to turbo smooth this, then I get something like that, which looks nice. Another way you could do this that works quite well if you've already got your geometry. So you can see this geometry um, obviously is built, but also it's optimised. So I've cut all my triangles and um, got rid of any verts that I don't need. So another way you could you could sort of achieve that would be to do a little insets. This doesn't give you quite as good results as the way that I did it before, um, but it gives pretty decent results. So let's just make sure that's all in one smoothing group. So you can see I've got these kind of specular highlights coming off the edges again. It looks much nicer than the low poly box did. Um, so essentially what you want to do is if you put everything into the correct smoothing group, you can inset by smoothing group. Um, so I've written a little script that will do that. Like this. So you can see now I've got all these nice soft edges. So this is what I had before. So what I had before, like that, looks quite hard and not very nice. And this is what I've got after. The other thing um, that you want to do when you're doing this is make sure you preserve your UV. So it's much easier for me to unwrap the low poly model and you can see that those UVs have been preserved. So uh, nothing's... Um, overlapping. I can actually check but it shouldn't be. So if I do select overlapping polys there's nothing overlapping. Okay so that's a really quick way to go from my low poly model to uh, a mid poly model that's ready to be put into the game without baking anything. Uh, like I say all this script is doing is it's just smoothing it's just selecting the different smoothing groups, performing an inset on them. So that's what this edit poly here is doing. It's just performed that inset on everything. And then this edit poly above has just taken everything and put it into one smoothing group. Uh, there are a few bugs with this script at the moment, which is I might clean it up and release it, um, but it's not really ready for that yet. Um, okay, so let's export this as an FBX. And what I want to do now is I'm going to I'm going to use NALD to bake a few simple maps because um, NALD is awesome and really quick. Uh, so let's load up NALD. Um, so. Yeah, we're going to bake a uh, curvature map and we're going to bake an ambient occlusion map and we're going to use those in uh, Quixel to create some masks. Okay, so now we're going to go file, load baker, or control B. We're going to grab our Uh, low poly asset, we're going to put the same asset into the high poly as well. So load this one thing from max into the low and the high. You could actually obviously 
if you wanted to, you could go back to this level um, and use this as a low poly. And what you can do, just to show you quickly, is if I put a chamfer modifier on that as well, just bring this in a bit. and put everything back into one smoothing group again. Um, I could actually use this now as a high poly. It's not perfect, there's a few little things in it, but it's a pretty good, um, really fast way of making a high poly. But anyway, I'm not doing high poly modeling, I just want this mid poly model. So um, let's load them in and I want a uh, AO map and I want a curvature map. And I'm gonna bake these, I'm gonna bake them at 4K. I'm probably gonna use them at uh, 2K, but let's bake them at four. Um, Okay, so that's those baked. I think I'm just going to lower the push map. I don't need to push it very far at all because the, the two models are identical. So that looks better. It was just a little error in here but that looks pretty good just have a look at our actual maps my AO map that looks good that looks fine let's have a look at the curvature okay so the curvature for uh, I'm going to put it into Quixel into DD so I want it to be single channel um, I also want to bring the scale right down I just want to get the edges I bring the contrast right up So I'm just trying to get these kind of white lines on these edges here. You can bake this curvature straight in Didu. I've never quite get the results that I want though, um, which is why I'm doing it like this. Okay, let's actually bake it. So, I think about there is good. Scale. Okay, that'll do. Um, okay, so let's export these now. Um, I'm going to put them in here. main and export again I'm not going through this I'm going through this stuff quite fast because this isn't I don't want to make this into a tutorial about how to use NALD or how to use Quixel it's more showing the overall workflow um, okay let me just check those things baked Okay, so I've got my AO and I've got my curvature. Right, so now I'm going to load up 
Endo, first of all. Um, launch MDU project creator. I've got my mesh, so just find that. I'm going to work at 4K. I think I'm going to end up having this at 2K, but uh, create project. Um, okay, let me just go and get my UVs from here. So let's render that. And, uh, copy and I'll just stick that right at the top. Paste. Okay, so I'm just going to add some detail now in Endo. So let's just load up 3D. Uh, pr probably what I'll do here is pause the video because um, this bit can be a little bit time consuming um, but the general idea is that I'm going to I'm probably just going to add some rivets and stuff like that so I'm just going to add little kind of screw holes Like this, and then I'll use Endo to create these little rivets and bits and pieces like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause the video and come back when I. Okay, so um, after about I don't know five ten minutes or something, um, I've just put in a few little details, some little panels and uh, little rivets and. Uh, bits and pieces, and little hinges and stuff. So I, I mean I could do a lot more with this but for the sake of this uh, that will do. Um, okay so I'm just going to grab all this And just to keep things clean, I'm just going to copy that into a new file, save that. So in here, this is going to be my normal detail. Save that. Um, right, I'm going to make a AO map and a cavity map. So AO um, that looks fine. And I'm going to make a cavity. Um, so, I've got my AO that I baked. I'm just going to take this and put that over the top. What have I done there? Oh, sorry. Multiply that over the top, that looks better. Um, so that's my AO. And I've got my curvature and this cavity goes over the top of that. And this one I'll just overlay. I 
think I'll be okay with the name for that. I might just tweak this a little bit. Okay, so that's my curvature. Okay, so now we're going to go into DDo to create some masks. So, let's lay up DDo. Um, I've got my mesh. I've got my normals. See it? This is the Y channel isn't flipped. I tend to just flip the Y channel right at the very end. Um, I just get less confused that way. Uh, so, sorry, that's, uh, that's my A over there. Um, we've got a curvature, which is that one. And we'll bake the object space normal and this position gradient. Although I don't think we massively need them. Um, okay, so I also want to. Uh, well, it doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to be exporting the masks. So um, I've got this set to UE4 RMA packs because that's what I would normally use. Um, we don't need the ID presets used. I'm going to say the texel density is 4096. My resolution is 4096, and that's correct. So this will fire up 3D and bake those maps that it wants. Okay, let's lay up 3D so we can see what we're doing. I usually set this to the UE4 lighting as well. Okay, looks all right. So what I want to do is I want to create, I'm not gonna texture this in D. I'm gonna texture it in Unreal 4 using material functions. Um, which will make sense when I get to that part. What I do want to do though is to create some um, rust and dirt and stuff for the um, panels. Now I don't want to have to paint it by hand. So what I'm going to do is add a smart material. And I'm going to choose this uh, painted old abandoned car there. So, um, these are all the channels that I've got. I don't want this dirt, and I don't want these rust patches, and I don't want this bleach effect either. What I want is just this stuff. So, you can see my curvature map's not come out to. I probably need to go and edit my curvature map a little bit because um, the rust isn't quite coming into the areas that I want it. It's working how I want it in a lot of these areas. It's just gone a bit wild there. So I probably that would be because of the curvature that I had. Um, anyway, I'm just going to change my paint to be white. So it's easy to see what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm going to come in and edit this mask a bit. So I could just try one of these different masks, see if I prefer it. Um, that 
and we want it to be the other way around. So I'm not sure that I do. Let's just go back. So I'm thinking now I probably should have done this at 2k just for the sake of the video. Uh, let's just go and see if we can edit this curvature a little. So the idea here is that I'm just going to mess with the settings. I could come in, oh there we go, back to that, get rid of it. In fact, that's not too bad. Um, I tend to accidentally paint in here quite a lot, so just make sure that I've got some undos on. Um, so I could come in here now and paint in some extra rust or um, maybe make this a little bit heavier and paint some of it out. Again, I think I need to go back to my curvature map and have a look at that. Um, let's just say we're happy with that mask for now. Uh, so once I'm happy with it, I'm going to right click on mask and I'm going to export that mask. So that is this here. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video again and I'm just going to mess with my curvature a bit to get the result I wanted. Okay, so this is more um, the result that I wanted. I'm just going to paint it again. Um, so let's accept that. Um, okay, so I'm done with DD for now, that's all I wanted it for. Okay, so I've got this mask now. Um, the other thing that I want is, so this mask is obviously going to paint some rust it to the, uh, to the prop for me. Uh, the other thing I want is I want to have some um, colours and stuff in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create another mask that will do that. So uh, I'm just going to go and grab my UVs again so I can see what I'm doing. I find this easier now, I could do this in 3D, I actually find it a bit easier in Marmoset, so I'm just going to load that. Okay, so I've got I've got this file saved as a PSD, um, and it's open in Marmoset so I can make changes to it. Uh, what I want to do then is just to add a layer with some So, um, I'm just going to do like a strip. Paint there. Okay, 
Okay, so I've got a black layer and I'm just going to paint white where I want. So this is going to be like some orange paint or something and the rest of it is going to be painted uh, white. So as I'm working on this, I can just save it and have a look and see what I'm getting in my set. Okay, so that needs lining up a little bit better. Um, but I'm not too bothered for now. I can always come back and change this, which is one of the nice things about this workflow. Okay, so I'll, I'll fill this in and come back in a sec. Okay, so um, that's some bits and pieces in, so it looks like that. Um, what I probably want to do, because this is quite rusty, um, is just maybe paint some of this stuff out, so get a brush. Uh, a black brush and I don't know so look. maybe just put some kind of scratches and stuff um, I'll leave that for now because that will it's a bit of messing about but I can again I can always come back and do this later okay so um, I also I just want to pack this now. So um, I've got this mask was my original rust. Uh, let me just make sure this is a um, RGB. Image. Uh, so let's stick that mask into the red channel. Let's stick this mask into the green channel. Um, and what I might do as well is just, I've got my AO that I want to bring into Unreal 4. So I'm just gonna stick the AO. I might use my blue channel for something else um, because I wanna keep things consistent. I'm gonna grab my AO. and put that into my alpha. So I've got blue channel spare, which I'll, I'd maybe use to put some different colored stripes on or something. Anyway, there we go, that's the masks done. Um, let's go into Unreal 4. Okay, so I brought in my normal map so this is the one that I created in ND, just the little bits and pieces, the rivets and stuff. Um, I have also brought in this masks thing that I just made. I'm going to change that to not be sRGB because it's masks and AO and stuff. Uh, and we've got our wall. So let's just stick our wall in so we can see what we're doing. Right, so the other thing that I've already got set up in here is um, I've got some textures. So I'm going to go through making materials, but um, I've got an albedo for some painted metal and normal map for some painted metal. So these are just materials. Um, these ones are actually out of Quixel, um, but you know, you can make these in substance or whatever you want. So in this albedo, I've got the roughness map is packed into the alpha channel of that, so you can see, it's probably hard to see, but there is some detail in there. Um, that's in the alpha. Uh, so I've got some painted metal and I've got some rust as well. Right, so what I want to do is to create 
uh, two material functions, one for my painted metal and one for the rust. And then what I'll do is I'll use the masks that I created to blend those material functions together. So let's create a material function. So right click, go to materials and material function, painted metal, I'm going to call it F2 because I've already made this. Okay, so here's my material function. Um, so obviously this material is going to be made up out of these maps. Um, and all I want to do is just create some very simple logic in here so that I can alter this in a material instance. So I need a texture coordinate and I want to multiply my texture coordinate by a parameter so that I can scale up and down the tiling of uh, this painted metal. Because uh, I'm in a function, what you need to use is one of these function inputs. So this is a, it's a bit, this allows me to, I can get access to this input through a material parameter, um, which I can alter in a material instance. This will all make sense as we go through it. So for this, I just want, this at the moment is a vector three. I just want a simple scalar single value. I'm gonna set it to one and I'm gonna use Previews default, that just means it'll default to this, so I don't necessarily have to put something in. And let's call this tiling. Okay, so this is going to allow me to tile up uh, and down this material. I'm also going to um, create another one of these to tint the color. So if we call this tint, let's just set that to one. So this is a three vector because it's an RGB. Uh, let's use previews default again. And let's multiply this by our albedo color. So this is going to allow me to put those stripes in. So I can tint some of it some of this I can tint white and some of it I can tint orange or blue to give it a stripe. Um, okay, so now we need to we need to kind of tie all this together. So we need to make materials attribute. So this is obviously the base color and that goes into our output. Um, so let's just make a value of zero and plug it into metallic. Um, I like to be able to control my roughness a bit, so I'm going to create another input called roughness. Uh, I'm going to leave that at zero, there's scalar, and it just means I can add a little bit to my roughness. And I'm just going to clamp this as well between zero and one to make sure that I don't break uh, anything. Um, okay, I want to be able to make my normal map stronger or weaker, so an easy way of doing that. Another function input, scalar, norm, strength, like that. Let's set this to 1 as default, um, and use preview as default as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the red channel by this. Multiply the green channel by this, and then I'm going to append all of those oops, back together. So the multiplied red channel goes into the red, multiplied green channel goes in there, and the blue channel we just do nothing to it. So that's our normal. So we've got base color, metallic roughness, normal. Um, if I add some AO in this, I could put it in there. I don't think I need AO. Um, and that's done. So that's our material function. So I'm going to go and set up exactly the same thing for the rust as well. Um, 
which in fact I've already done. So uh, there's my Rust function. So exactly the same thing, I'm tiling stuff, I'm multiplying the normals, um, I've got something to tint, I've set my metal up to zero because it's Rust. Right, so now what we need is a material that ties all this stuff together. So let's create a new material. I'm going to call this uh, paint and rust. So this is a, not a material function, this is a material now. Um, oh, so one thing that I forgot to mention is in my function, what I want to do is if I just click an empty space, I want to make sure that this is exposed to the library as well so that I can get at it. So back in this material we can um, bring in a function, so material function call or you can just hold F to do this. I want my painted metal and I want my rust Okay, so what I need to do now is um, set up some parameters so that I can control these things that I set up. Let's also bring in these bits and pieces. So we've got our masks that we created and our normal map. Uh, right, so the mask that we've Got, I can use that to, I'm going to create two vector three parameters. I'm going to call this color one. And I'm going to call this color two. And then I'm going to lerp between those two colors based off this stripy mask that I made, which was in my green channel. I'm just going to set them as one for default. Okay, so that now is my colour of the painted metal. Uh, the roughness, let's just name this rough paint. Let's plug that in there so we can control that. Uh, and normal, norm paint. Go in there, let's just set this to 1 as default. And our tiling, tile paint, and set that as 1 as well. Okay, what I'm also going to do to keep things organised is select all of these and put them into a group. So this is all stuff to do with my paint. So they're all going to be in a paint group. You don't need to do that, it just keeps things a bit more organised in your instance. Um, okay, so I need some of these now for... My rust as well, so roughness my rust. You've got to name these individually, otherwise um, they'll kind of. It doesn't matter if they're in different groups; they'll just they're not there. So that's all stuff. I need tint as well. So tint rust. Plug all them in, and all of these are going to be a new group that will call Rust. Right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to actually convert because I want to 
I'm going to use this for lots of different objects um, and what I want to do is just create this mask. All this stuff is going to stay, stay the same but I'm just going to create new masks and switch them out for the different ones. So once I've done this, making another ob similar object to this is going to be really fast. Um, so let's create that, turn that into a parameter as well. So that's the mask that controls everything. Um, in this case, I'm going to have to make sure that I put my uh, my kind of rust map into red and this paint mask into green and my AO is always going to be in the alpha, which is why I put it into the alpha. Right, so now I want to combine the rust in uh, where this, the mask in this red channel here uh, told it to be. So what I want to do is to blend these things together and I want a blend uh, standard it's called. So blend standard just blends everything, so it'll blend the base colour, metallic, spec, everything you see here, it'll blend them together from the functions. So I'm blending, my base is going to be my painted metal, my top material is going to be this rust, and the alpha that I blend it on is going to be this red channel. I should think the red channel is inside out, so I could go and just flip this in Photoshop, or I can just do a one minus here. Like that. Uh, right, now I want to um, blend in my this normal map that goes over the top of everything. So there's a blend baked normal. So I can blend my baked normal over the top for my kind of detail normals from these material functions. Now I want to blend in my AO. So blend. You can see this stuff is set up for exactly doing this because these little nodes exist to blend in your normal and blend in your AO. Um, so my AO is in there. What I'm actually going to do is just take a power node and create a new parameter called AO just so that I can kind of make that AO pop a bit more. Uh, right, now I just need to plug that. I think that's everything. I just need to plug it in. Um, so what I need to do is to, sorry, I need to break these material attributes. So that in here, everything, the result of that has got the base color and the normal map, the reference map, and all this stuff combined into this one output. So now I'm just breaking them apart. Now I just need to plug the base color into base color, metallic into metallic, roughness into roughness, normal into normal, AO into AO. If I, I mean, I'm not using any of these other things, but if I was, then I mean, it won't do any harm link them together. Okay, so that's my material function. You can see what it's doing. Like that. So now let's try it out. So, let's find where I put my function. Sorry, my uh, base material. I'm going to create a material instance of that. I'm just going to call, call this one board 2. So, I'm just going to put that in with all this stuff because this is this instance is going to be distinct to this wall. Okay, so you can see straight away we're getting something. Um, so you can see my mask is working. Let's just go into this parameters of this and see if we can get a better look. So one of the really cool things about this method is that I can use tiling materials. So let's tile this up, let's say six times. And then I've got this really kind of detailed thing that I can zoom right in on and it looks really good close up. So it's, the, it's giving you the best of both worlds because it's giving you 
um, the high res that you get from tiling materials, um, but it's also giving you the unique detail that you'd get from uh, texturing an asset in zero to one space. Um, so the other thing I can do is I've got these two colors. So this second color now should be the color of the stripe that I put in like that. So I can give myself, let's say maybe some horrible green color. That looks horrible. Um, So again, looks really nice close up. I, I, I'd want to paint this mask to be a bit more interesting and a bit kind of cracked and peeling and stuff. Um, so I can change the color of the the base. So like that. Um, I can alter the strength of the normal map on there. So I can make the normal pop more. I think about one is probably about right for that. Um, maybe make this a bit more rough. Make it look a bit older. Uh, let's have a look at our rust. So our rust at the moment is black. Uh, it, we need to tile this up a bit as well. So you can see I'm, I can tile my rust up. independently of the other one. So it's probably a good idea to have these around the same scale. Um, again, I can make the normal on my rust really pop if I want. I might make that a little bit stronger actually. Um, and I can change the roughness, but I think that looks okay. Looks pretty good. Um, so, I think that is basically it for this really long video. Um, hopefully, I couldn't find a lot of, uh, there's some videos going through material functions on YouTube, but hopefully this one is a little bit more um, in depth. Uh, so there is a good one from uh, Quixel, but it, it does kind of rush through it and doesn't really set it up step by step. So hopefully uh, this is helpful to people. Um, again, the, the, now that this is set up, the thing that's really good about this method is that... Um, just do a build. The thing that's really good about this method is now I can go and just make a low poly asset like this, if I need a bit of ceiling or um, I want another bit of wall, just scale that up there. Uh, a bit more resolution on our light maps. Then I just need to make a low poly, I can run it through uh, the script to make this mid poly asset um, and then just run it through DDo to get some to create these maps um, and straight away I've got my next asset because I've already got this function set up. So what I'd also have is I'd have functions, um, well I'd sorry I'd have materials set up that maybe blended um, sort of shiny metal with bits of rust. This could actually rather than be rust this could be um, just metal that's, uh, that's exposed underneath the paint, which might work better in this instant instance. But hopefully, um, hopefully this is useful.